name's Todd Moore. I'm 23 years old, and uh, my hobbies are skiing and aquariums. We wrote some of our biggest songs when we were young. You know, they say that, well, you know, how come you're not writing Bittersweet anymore? And that's a great question. I'm, I'm writing other songs, but there's, there's something about when you're young that you, de you don't get back. One of the finest things about our journey is that last year and this year, they've been the most successful years of our career in every way. The amount of people that we've been playing for, the amount of money we've been taking home, all of it. So to hit gold after 32 years is a really nice thing. Our first gig was in 1986, playing some uh, parties at CU Boulder, college parties. Played just for fun and then finally got a bar gig and then just kind of naturally progressed from there. We bought an old van, started driving around the country, and went to Chicago first because we knew somebody that we could crash on their floor. Just begged for gigs, knocked on doors, ended up at a place called At The Tracks. It was a comedy club, and the guy gave us an opening gig. It just turned out that Chris Farley and Tim Meadows and some other big wig actors were just getting their start too, so it ended up being kind of a fun gig for us. And then in 92, it's kind of when we start hopped on a bus and we've been doing that ever since. So quite some time, 30 some odd years. They were going to do a tour in 2004 that was six weeks or so and wanted a keyboard player. And Brian called me and he's like, hey, do you want to go on tour? And I was like, sure. And then he called me a few days later. He's like, you want to play with us for New Year's just for fun? It's a three hour show and like no rehearsal. And it's going to be live on the radio, too. And I was like, OK, sure. I don't think that uh, those guys originally planned to have a keyboard player the whole time. I just kind of stuck around and I kept showing up and nobody told me to leave. We started this band as just three buddies having fun playing music together and it's still that way. These are like high school and college buddies that wanted to be a rock and roll band. And you know that saying where if you find a job that you like to do, it's, you don't work a day in your life? That's what this is. Big Head Todd and the Monsters. 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 If you recognize the name, you're part of the new generation of rock and roll. The industry's changed a lot. You know, back then we were on a major label, so you have a big team of people that are pushing you and they make money when you make money. There was a lot more political pressure. Now with the industry kind of shrunk, everybody's kind of a freelancer and we get to call our own shots. You decide where you want to go, how you want to route your tour, what venues to play, who to play with. You can kind of try things that may or may not work without being afraid of what our fans might think. Our fans, they've been really loyal, and we see a lot of the same faces over the years. And we never banned the popular because of the trend. I kind of think that means people that come to see us come to see us for the, the reason I want people to come see us, because they enjoy what we do musically. People who started out being fans of our band as young people ended up having children, and their children became fans. We're glad that a lot of people have come back over and over again. It's a nice family situation. I like seeing all those Big Head Todd fans hang out with each other when we're not even there. 
community building is a really great part of the kind of job we do. If they didn't keep showing up, we wouldn't have this job. We owe everything to them. Hey, yeah, Big and Todd, man, awesome. Where are we going tomorrow? Asheville. Bodyguards? What? Of course. Okay. All right. Here, I got my flashlight. Got my flashlight. Here. Backstage, Botanical Gardens, Atlanta. Ready to rock. Sold out show. Here we go, baby. I think something that's helped us is we're all good friends and we haven't really dealt with some of the issues a lot of bands have, you know, we kind of get along and like each other. It's just the nature of playing together for 33 years. You get kind of a telepathy where you know where the other person's going, what they're thinking, and it makes it fun to be able to play music with people that you can connect on that level with. Seeing Todd in the back lounge, he always has a guitar, he's always playing. He's always like watching other like artists on YouTube and trying to get licks done. Everyone keeps working at their craft. Nobody thinks that they're at the pinnacle. We just don't play the same 12 or 14 songs every night. You know, we play a pretty big variety and we have, you know, a couple hundred songs to choose from. Todd's so prolific as a writer, he's continually writing. It's just amazing to me that this band continually make new music. They do blue stuff and they do rock and roll and it's just true musicians and true talent. We're still newbies to rock and roll, basically. I mean, Stones have been longer, right? Los Lobos has been together for 47 years. So we're in the middle somewhere. They get to go play music. They get to travel the country. They get to meet people who are generally impressed, been touched by something that they've created. I don't think anyone in this crew or our band would rather be doing anything else but this. We don't want to get day jobs either. So that's a little bit of a motivation. But no, it's all about the music. As long as everybody's having fun and enjoying what we're doing, then there's not really a reason to stop. Being able to play to different audiences everywhere, every night, the opportunity to travel all over the world and to learn about different people, that's pretty amazing. Thank you, sir. Enjoyed that. Big head pot in the monsters, kids.